My friends, streaming live on YouTube and Facebook, it is Freestyle Repertory Theaters and Synergy Theaters monthly production of Right Away. Please welcome your hosts for the show, Kat Coppett and Michael Durkin. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, hey. Here hey. I am. Hey, here there I am. Are. All right. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I am Mike Turpin. I am the executive director of Freestyle Theater right here in lovely New York City. And, and I am Kat Coppett, the co-director of Mako Improv Theater and a company member with Synergy Theater. Um, tonight's show is right away. And it's a co-production between Freestyle Rep here in New York City and our good friends out in Walnut Creek, California at Synergy Theater. Two companies that are divided by a continent, but united in the belief that improvisation is a very important uh, theatrical form. Right Away is, in fact, a monthly show, and we started presenting it on May 25th, 2020. It was born out of a desire to keep creative people creating together in spite of isolation and uncertainty. And now we are continuing to do it as things are changing, at least up in our part of the world, because we appreciate all the wonderful people who've shown up to do just that. And we don't want to be isolated back in our geographic in-person locations once we found this connection uh, across it, time and space. And it's a wonderful connection that we have between time and space. And so I'm glad to be here with my good friend, Cap, who is not here, but someplace else. And here's how it's gonna work tonight. We've got five playwrights. They're gonna have 45 minutes to write a brand new, spanking new uh, uh, play based on your suggestions from you, the very lovely audience. And while those playwrights are off writing, everyone here in the audience, you, are invited to play some improv writing games with Mike and me. I think you will probably want to use paper and pen or pencil instead of uh, your computer. So uh, this is your moment to scramble around and try to find those analog devices that might be somewhere in your house. After 45 minutes, the playwrights will return and present the world premiere readings of their new work. Now. Before we get going, uh, there's a couple of uh, uh, housekeeping things we should talk about. For those of you who are participating over Zoom, we ask you to keep yourselves muted and your video off for now. There will be times when we, when we do invite you to uh, unmute and turn your video on, but just know that we are being streamed live on YouTube and Facebook so that when your video and your audio is on, you can be seen and heard by everybody in the whole world and shared across the internet. The other thing is, or another thing is, uh, we suggest that you hide, uh, for optimal viewing, hide those non-video participants. And the way to do that is to go down to the lower left-hand corner of your screen, and there's a, a, a camera icon next to that. To its right is, is a little carrot. If you hit that, you go to that carrot, it'll bring up a menu. And if you scroll that menu down a little bit, you'll see a little box that uh, allows you to hide non-video participants. If you just mark that, uh, it's it just uh, it, an easier and more uh, enjoyable way to watch what we're doing. Uh, and lastly, open up your chat feature, the chat feature, which is kind of right there on your, on your uh, uh, panel down there, because that's how we're going to get uh, suggestions, those suggestions which will be inspiring our playwrights. Speaking of playwrights, let's introduce tonight's intrepid writers. Uh, today, our first writer is Laura Valpi. She began her improv career in Seattle with Unexpected Productions at the Market Theater. She's been performing and teaching with Freestyle Rep since 2001. Uh, her play, Where's the Baby? Parenting in Pieces, received a stage reading at the Barrow Group. And she is a regular longtime host and playwright here at Right Away. This show has Hello, been Laura. so much fun. Yeah. This is well, you are a linchpin of our show. You are. You are. Is that sand I see on your shoulder? There's so much. It's just, yes, oh, actually. I didn't know that was my glasses. Yes, it okay. It's well, very dust, you. Michael. It's very dust. 
That's right. Uh, it's good to have you here, folks. Thank and you. it's also Thank good to have uh, it's also good to have our our uh, compatriot or comrade out at Walnut Creek at Synergy Theater, the artistic director and co-producer of tonight's show, uh, Mr. Ken Adams. And he is, I'm telling you, this guy's working overtime uh, producing online improv shows every Thursday and Friday, very possibly more than that. And you can tell us that. He's also uh, the author of a very excellent book on improvisation called How to Improvise, a full-length play, The Art of Spontaneous Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ken Adams, good to have you. Well, hello, thank you so much. It's awesome to be here. Is it more than Thursday and Friday? Uh, Thursday's at six California time, Friday's at seven California time. Okay, all right, well, good, good, good to have you, all right. Great to be here, thank you so much. Our next playwright is uh, Laura Livingston, who is the artistic director of Freestyle uh -huh. Repertory Theater. She is holding Ken Adams' amazing book. I'm just trying um, to pick up some last minute uh, help with my work tonight. Excellent, excellent. Well, that will definitely do it for you. She is, uh, she has developed and appeared in Freestyle's video series, Home Fooling, Teach Your Family How to Play Improv Games With You. She's been teaching online in New York City public schools for uh, ever. Um, and uh, she, her series of her plays has been produced at the Metropolitan Playhouse in New York City. She's been directing online at the Metropolitan Virtual Playhouse since this strange new time has begun. And she is a teacher and mentor and inspiration to many, many of us here tonight. Maybe all of us. Hello, Laura. Hello, Kat. Hello, Mike. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. As always, it's good to see you. Uh, we have also, uh, and, and my, I don't know if you're still there, Mike, are you still there? We also have a uh, uh, the wonderful uh, playwright, teacher, uh, uh, Mr. Jeff Tarson, are you there? It's always good I to am. have Jeff Tarson. I, Jeff am. Tarson. I have not left yet. No, right. I'm right here. Uh, a, a member of our company back in the mid nineties, uh, uh, a teacher now at, and I'm not sure where, tell me where you're teaching. Hofstra University. I teach at, yes. It, you know, um, if, I, if I'd ever gone to any university, I would have uh, uh, known that, but I, I didn't. Uh, Jeff, good to have you here. Absolutely, great to be here. I'm thrilled to be back. Thank you. And finally, we have our Making Her Right Away debut on screen, although she, I think she was one of the first performers in person way back in the olden days when we were doing this at Freestyle Repertory Theater. We have Miss Sheila Head. In between now and then, Sheila was one of the original writers of Cyber Chase and wrote The Ruth Truth for Oxygen based on her experience as a PI in Chinatown. She is says she's better at procrastinating than writing, but I, am. Uh, I don't know if that's true because we'll she's gotten things done and she's an amazing writer. <laughs> um, she's improvised a horror show with Jeff Tarson and her, her play Hollywood Nurses will be produced by Phoenix Theater next year. Sheila. Oh, thanks for having me. This is great. I look forward to it. It is a delight to see you here uh, and a treat for all of us. All right. I'm going to go procrastinate. All right. Now, uh, now you don't have to, you don't have to procrastinate. In fact, uh, we're going to bring every, all the playwrights back on screen now. Um, uh, all of our good friends, all of our good playwrights back on screen. And audience, we suggest at this moment that you open up the chat feature. If you haven't done so already, open up that chat feature. Because each of our playwrights is now going to ask you for a suggestion that will inspire their next 45 minutes of work and the one act play that comes out of it. So uh, uh, when they ask you for something, whatever idea you have, whatever inspiration comes to you, put it down in that chat there and let's, uh, let's uh, get them going. All right. So our first playwright of the evening that we introduced was Ms. Laura Velpe. Okay, cool. I would like for my play, for my inspiration, have you ever had like a great garage sale find or, you know, just left out on the street, you know, like a curb find, stoop sale find, something like that, something that I want to incorporate could be an object something you or found or a, on the curb or at a garage yeah, sale. Yeah, like a great, you know, just that like just awesome garage sale, whatever. 
Um, I'll let a few come there in. You go. Look away. And All right, they are coming in. Yeah. You've got now some suggestions. Yeah, I like that. Oh, these yeah. are great. You know what? Uh, I'm going to take two because I feel like it. I'm going to take TV tray and bowling shoes. The first two that came in. These are great. TV tray and bowling shoes. Excellent. I just want to love both of those. These are awesome. And thank you. Next, great. we've got Ken Adams. All right. Well, one of my favorite playwrights in the whole world is Moliere, the famous 17th century farseer. And he wrote plays in rhyming couplets. So I'm going to try to honor that tonight by writing a play in the style of Moliere in writing couplets and what in rhyming couplets. Yeah. So what I would like from you is imagine it's 17th century France. Somebody has come home from a voyage on sea and they brought something home with them. What did they bring home with them? And 17th century France now. Ooh, a sword. All right, I'm going to let one or two come in there. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw sword first, so I'll take it. But I also saw syphilis, so I have to take that too. So I will take both suggestions, sword and syphilis. And boy, if life doesn't imitate art. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. All right, thank you very much. Next, we have Laura Livingston. <laughs> Cat is sneezing on me. Uh, Laura Livingston, what would you like to get to inspire your play? I'm kind of afraid now because uh, <laughs> the ask is far less innocent than Ken's was. Um, uh, well, it's 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 the first day of summer, so or yesterday it was. So it, it is. is today's the longest day of the year and or the shortest night of the year. So I'd like to get two things: something long and something short. Something long and something short. Uh, assuming the road that we have gone down so far. <laughs> this is a very clever audience that we have here. Conversation oh, nice. with a boring person and life. There you go. Uh, there we go. See, both all in one. Uh, very nice. Next, we have Mr. Jeff Tarson. Uh, yes, I would like... Uh, I want write, to write, write a play, by the way, that does not rhyme. That's going to oh. be my task. Ooh, that's tough. Okay. Ooh. Now that's... we'll see how it goes. It's new to me, but I'm going to write a play that does not, and not in rhyming couplets. But I would like uh, a suggestion of, of, of unusual location. As a matter of fact, I would say a location you have never seen in a play before. You've never seen a play Oof. take place or, or seen take place in where? Where would be something really unusual, whether it's interior or exterior, whatever it would be. Now look away. Okay. Oh my goodness. All sorts of wonderful ones. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. So I am going to um, go with, I because I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to do an appendix is what I saw. There we go. There, you there go. we go. And we appendix. have some choices there. We'll have to see. There's some great there choices. We go. There and we go. finally, Sheila Head, what would you like? I would like an opening line of dialogue, please. Very nice. Very nice. An opening line of dialogue, anything a person could say to start off a play. I can't, I'm going to take the first two, which is I never told you this before. I died today. There you go. Very, very nice. All right. So playwrights, uh, do we need to recap or should we just send you off? Why don't we, uh, can we just get a, remind us of your suggestions each one? Sure, I'll start. Um, I got a TV tray and bowling shoes. Ken? And I got a sword and syphilis. Don't tell right. me your personal problems. Oh, well, no, answer me. I'm sorry. I got it. Okay. I got conversation with a boring person and life. Uh, I yeah. got appendix. Right. And I got, I never told you this before. I died today. There we go. All right, write it. In a few moments, we're gonna send you away for 45 minutes. Now you keep an eye out for texts because we're going to be sending you suggestions all through your writing there. But uh, remember this, and of course, for us all, uh, attending tonight. Whatever we write is really, really good and really, really fun. So have a really good time. So, hang your marks. Get set. 
Right away. Right away. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So our writers are turning off their video and sounds, hopefully tuning us out. And now we invite you to turn on your videos and wave hello. And uh, if you're just joining us now, a quick reminder that we are also streaming on YouTube and Facebook. So if you don't want to be seen by the internet, just keep your video off. But you are more than welcome to still participate in our exercises. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab some paper and pen. And we're going to introduce our uh, our improv activities to you. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we're, we're, we're challenging you all tonight. Uh, uh, we have a, a, a strategy. We have a mission, a goal. Uh, uh, but it, it, should, uh, it should be lots of fun, I hope. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Catch, uh, um, should I just tell them what I'm going to do? Sure. I'm going to tell you an eight line story, but I'm gonna tell it to you in gibberish. I'll, I'll stop after each one of my sentences and all you do is translate my gibberish. What did I just say? So What's gibberish, line. Michael? Gibberish is, it'll be something like this. Something like that. Just just nonsense, right? Nonsense, absolute nonsense. It's entirely up to you. Whatever you hear, whatever you feel, go with it and write it down. So I'm about to uh, begin the story. I hope you have a piece of paper and a pencil. But I Para pa sa mga isa, e karakta sa iyo. E na makrasa, alato siya na matulit. A short rabacot la mezza cedo. E non la si scende la quadra la si scende la volta. So, if there's anybody who would like to, and of course I, I'm always looking for for me because it's such a quintessential author, uh, uh, but anybody who would like to read theirs, we would be more than happy to, uh, to hear that, to hear their story or hear their uh, interpretation of that story. 
I uh, apologize. I can barely hear you, Mike. Really? But I think you just asked me to read what you what you what you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, anybody else have trouble hearing me? It it may be my computer. If you can hear me. No, it feels like you're too far away from the mic. Bring it right down here. Well, okay. Well, this this might be why I didn't quite get it, but. The story that I heard okay. on the first and last day of the month of the Long Rocks, my birthday, everyone from miles around went to the crater. Most of them were hungry. It goes without saying, I was fasting. <laughs> my father, of course, said it was too late to go shopping. My father, he always thought quickly, Dad, nothing would stop his invention. He dove into the crater. Soon we were all very festive. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell you how close that was to my sex. I swear to God, the crater, I uh, was <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Anyone else want to throw their story in there? Beth, by golly, throw it in there. Arlene. Sure. Um I was walking on the road yesterday and guess what I saw? An old friend, you remember Bob, don't you? He doesn't look very good. Of course, neither do I. And when we were talking, your name came up. He said that the two of you were engaged years ago. I couldn't believe it. You never told me you were engaged to Bob. I was so embarrassed. You have deceived me, lied to me. <laughs> oh, Lord. They're so good. Wonderful, wonderful, Royce. wonderful. Uh, anyone else? Royce, did you want to read yours? Or Harper? We'd love to. Yeah, Harper, I'd love to hear yours. Oh, and then Royce will come to you. Mine's a bit younger, but it, I think it's okay. Go on. It's great. Dark and stormy night or very early morning in a Midwestern college campus. Ghosts haunt these hallowed halls, specifically my science classroom. Ghosts of students who have 2.0s. And when they appear before you, they're always wearing football helmets. Have you ever heard of such a thing? A classroom haunted by failing football players. My God, what will they say about me on Rate My Professor? But if you ever struggle on your exams, why not try asking for help? You never know who might answer you. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Right. One Royce, we have time for you, and then it will be time for a suggestion. Here, play Royce. No? You're on mute, okay. but I thought I saw you volunteer, but if you don't want to, you certainly don't have to. Okay, awesome. All right. So we... Yeah, let's... Uh, we're going to uh, uh, give the uh, uh, writers a suggestion, and here's what we'd like to give them. Uh, and this is a time for all of you out there uh, to get that chat uh, uh, feature open. Uh, one of the characters is going to use a Latin expression. What expression could they use? Let me just open up my chat too. I use that one every day. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, can we go with Kyrie Eleison? Um, it's just um, Domino Excelsior. I like that. Look at these. Are, look at these, babe. These are wow. great. Uh, I, I, I'm going to go with Kyrie Eleison. Uh, it okay. it kind of just takes me back to my uh, 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 days of being an altar boy. Okay. All right, are you going to send it over to him? Can't I am. Me? Okay. All excellent. right. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, the next thing, the next thing we want to do. This is more of a, and, and once again, uh, 
everyone who's out there is, is certainly encouraged to participate. And I, and I, and certainly this one is all, um, it's all audible. So you don't even have to be on the screen to participate uh, in this one. Um, we're gonna, we'd like to create a, a couple of characters. And there's a, an exercise that we inaugurated many, many years ago. It's called Bantam Lake, which has no relation to the, to the exercise at all. But we'll start off by uh, 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 developing or creating a, uh, a name. And then uh, through chat or, or on screen or just Verbally, we just keep adding to the character. For instance, uh, uh, just uh, an ex example might be uh, Bob Lemon, it, uh, and that's that's the character's name. And I would say Bob Lemon and Cat. You would offer something about Bob Lemon. He lives in a studio apartment. Yeah. He uh, lived uh, in a studio apartment uh, for uh, 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 37 years before they uh, found his uh, uh, dog. I don't, so we would just keep adding to, I, I, uh, not a particularly good example for my <laughs> part, but just keep adding to, uh, to uh, uh, this character and build a character that way. So, um, so I'm up for uh, either doing it verbally or verbally and on, on chat. So uh, um, does anybody have an offer of a, a name? Any name or, or, yeah, anything. The first name, last name. And if you, come on, if you come on screen and raise your hand, then we can call on the next person. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But we can also oh. take things All in right. chat too. Cornelius Shaw. I, 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 let's take Cornelius Shaw. I'll take, so now Cornelius Shaw. Uh, I know uh, of Cornelius Shaw uh, that he, uh, he worked at, uh, he worked uh, for many years for the uh, Ringling Brothers Barnum Bailey Circus. <laughs> Great. <laughs> And I realize you can also just raise your, like raise your um, uh, hand and, and put it the next offer in the chat. I'm just trying to keep us from having three or four offers at once, right? So he works for the Ringling Brothers Circus. Um, who wants to make the next offer? Arlene. He, for the Ringling Brothers Circus, he teaches at the Clown College in Sarasota, Florida. Mm -hmm. I, I also, uh, uh, by seeing chat here, I see he's blind in one eye. He, he was fired uh, from that job too. And it's quite a story. I, I don't know if anybody knows the, the reason why he was fired. I, like I mean, I... I don't know the reason, but uh, it's a, kind of an interesting. Uh, he was fired because he only had one eye and it made it very difficult for him to uh, teach tightrope walking to the other clowns. Oh, the <laughs> that, that, of course, brings up the tightrope uh, uh, incident uh, with his wife. Um, uh, <laughs> He, he also used too much oil on the clowns to fit into his in the little car, Deborah's reminding All us. The, the oil in the car was a problem as well. Yeah, that was that was sort of the the warning, and then the and then the tightrope incident was sort of the uh, that broke the camel's back. Well, as a matter of fact, he broke a camel's back. <laughs> uh, there was a there was an incident uh, also, so uh, um, uh, he. He eventually made back to uh, the city uh, uh, where he was born. Um, geez, I can't remember where he was born. Where the heck was he born? I, I, you know, at the moment, I can't. I don't know if anybody knows 
That's right. He was born. He was born in Beaver Dam, uh, it's a cute little town. Uh, um, and I think uh, I think that's where he passed away. Or he still may be there. He still may be there. I'm I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, we have the idea. We have the idea. Can we develop a um, a lady. The <laughs> towel ringer, the bowling alley. Nice. That's that's what he's doing now. As a matter of yeah, fact, yeah, has yeah. has been doing that for uh, 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 ever since he got back to Beaver Dam. So, what can we uh, develop a a, a, a lady? Uh, uh, and of course, once again, um, <laughs> and he still wears that red nose. Oh, that's so cute. Um, a lady. We need a, a Annabelle. That was the that was the woman I was I was trying to come up with her name. Annabelle. I I don't I don't recall her last name. I um uh, I, I remember her first name, but I, I don't recall her last name. Annabelle. Um, Jesus. Who's Annabelle Hose. Oh, golly. I think we all know Annabelle Hose. Uh, she, she had a, a kind of a, an interesting thing she would do with her hair. She would uh, part it down the middle, but it was more of a, a north-south kind of thing rather than <laughs> this middle. She kind of went, uh, she had this lateral, uh, it was sort of a lateral part in her, right across through the top of her head. What was, uh, what did she do for a living? I, I, I sort of, I sort of remember what she did. Yes, Alex, we, we are talking about the singer. She was a, a singer who also made maps. Oh, oh, the, um, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I think most of her maps were of uh, uh, places where uh, singing festivals happened. That's right. She would go touring around. Um, to all the festivals, singing, booking, singing gigs, and then and then create the maps of the different towns where the festivals were. She was very With successful. Singing. That's right. That's right. She had a group for a while called the Singing Cartographers. That's that's, that's exactly right. right. I have several of their albums. Uh, uh, <laughs> they had a real. They had one. They were like one hit wonders um, on the pop charts. They had a um, a really famous song, like oh, what was song that, that made song? the chart. What was that song though? What was that song? I, I never remember titles. I can hum it a little bit. <laughs> yes, that was the one. Find you, me. Find me. Find me. That's I right. Know. That was the one. It was actually a very uh, sweet little song. Yeah. Um. Uh, do you remember? I, 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 I sort of remember why they broke up. Uh, and it was, <laughs> like, was love me or longitude me? Yep, that's right. That's right. I'm, I which became almost as popular as Find Me. Uh, oh, um, you know, I hate to interrupt uh, this, but we do have to send another suggestion while we're um, oh, okay, yeah, oh, okay, um. Well, let me just check. Do we, uh, let me just check and see what we've got here. Um, uh, so we, we need a, we need a, a, a character has to do a monologue. Right. Is that what we're going to give them as a suggestion, but we have a topic that we wanted to give them. Is that yeah, what we wanted to give them? What is that? It, uh, yeah, it's some sort of uh, um, a topic. I think it's about their dog. 
I think I okay. think the I think the basis of the monologue is I had a dog once. Okay. So, all right, we have the. Uh, I want to grab a couple more. Lady Latitude. I, I just, I can't help but write that down because it's just so mellifluous. Uh, uh, I think that was, uh, I think that's what uh, uh, Annabelle Hose, uh, uh, when she was the singing cartographer, I think she went by the name of Lady Latitude. Uh, um, it was, uh, uh, She's very uh, successful. All right, so we have uh, two characters. And if, if we might, just for a moment, seeing as how we haven't done much writing yet, or not an awful lot of writing, uh, can we move on to uh, uh, We'd like to show you some settings. Uh, and I'm going to very nimbly, I hope, uh, show you a couple of settings. And I, and I'd like everybody to, to choose one or, 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 you know, come up with your own. But I, I have um, uh, done some research here and, and, and if I can possibly screen share these things, I will. Uh, four pictures of four different environments. And if one grabs your attention, what we'd like to do over the next couple of minutes is have you guys write a, uh, just like a, a, a short, personification of this environment. Look at the environment and, and if you can describe it in sort of um, human physical terms, uh, the, the crying of the, the crying of the trees or, or uh, the, the smile on the sun. So whatever. If you can personify these, any one of these. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this. I've been practicing all day, everybody. And, and I'm hoping that I can do this. So here's my first one. So it's a, it is what it is. It is what it is. Here's, here's another one. And here's the third one. And I'm not sure, I'm not seeing any favorites or anything, but that's where I'd like to be right now. And here's the fourth one. So I'm just gonna run past them one more time and ask you to maybe pick one, or if you should choose to just imagine one and, and personify a, uh, a location, an environment. And we'll take about, well, I don't know, three or four minutes. And this last one, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna kind of do a, something to, Get this one. I had to do this. I don't know why, but I had to. So here they are. So for the next, uh, let's say, four minutes, uh, grab one of these and personify one of these environments. Uh, uh, I guess that's it. That's it. What does that mean? Personify it? Yeah. Well, I, I think it, uh, I mean, I look at the barn one and I think, uh, I think of the blushing barn. So it's like a, a human trait uh, attributed to uh, uh, an inanimate object. Uh, so I guess I'm asking, we're talking about uh, uh, applying human traits to to the setting, which I, so I like we'd be, 
So mm-hmm. I would be like what we just did for the characters I would be doing for these places. Yeah. You know, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah. 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 I guess either writing uh, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, different thoughts or scrunching them together in some kind of narrative. So I'm going to give you a four minutes. Cool. One more minute. What do you think, everybody? Come on back. Yeah. All right. Well, All I wrote right. one. Excellent. Oh, good. Royce. Royce? <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Can you hear me? Okay. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. The tall man was dressed in dark drab clothing except for the sparkling pin on the long coat. His stubble beard was flecked with what appeared to be white streaks. His eyes were large and dark and empty when he wasn't talking. He stood so still that I sometimes wondered if he had stopped breathing. It made me feel a little eerie. (laughs) Now, do you know which scene it was? Put the pictures Uh out. Oh, I'll get the pictures back up. Okay, I can do that. Uh, it's got to be, I, I, I got to be pointing to this one. Yep, yep. All right. I, exactly. I, I can, can kind of see him in there. <laughs> Beautiful. All Great. right. All right. Uh, 
I'm going to read mine. Before you read yours, can we get another suggestion? Believe it or not, it is time for our third suggestion. And we would love a suggestion because we're talking about setting of a stage direction written for the designers for theatrical effects. So what could happen in the space? What kind of theatrical effect or setting kind of environmental thing could happen? Orchestra pit. Oh, how do we how do we have an orchestra pit happen? Uh, what about like some some music, live music? Uh, or how about that? Ooh, fog enters from I feel like fog oh, enters oh. from other flies or phone. What, what do we like? I love the idea of fog. Yeah, I do too. How about fog enters, sweeps in from the left? I'll say it just that way. Fog <laughs> sweeps in from the left. Now that's that's almost a, a, a personification. It is it's beautiful. Fogs sweeping in from the. Uh, uh, anybody else have a uh, um, a, a, a personification or a or a, a, a setting to to uh, offer to. Uh, I am not sure that I can get my stuff here. <laughs> well, I'm going to read. Uh, here's here's what I wrote. Uh, uh, let's see if I can read it now. That's the hardest part about uh, doing these spontaneous writing things is then trying to read them. Here's what Before I Before you go, can I just read Deborah's from the chat? I'm sorry. Well, by all you. means, by all means, by all means. I am having the red. A the red lipstick barn brought high anxiety to the drab balding head of the landscape. <laughs> Very nice. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. Yes, excellent. Oh, that's very cool. Very cool. Uh, I don't necessarily want to read mine, but is, are there more that are there to be read? Or does anyone want to read theirs? Once again, you don't have to appear on screen. You can just Turn your microphone out. Uh oh, somebody's got one. Is that somebody coming to do it? Why can I not get a full screen here? These oh. are these are hard prompts. We have the stakes this time. I just thought I, I saw sounded some, in there because that was cool. I just thought I saw somebody uh, check in with us, but uh, well, right, read, read, make a read. All right, I will, I will, I will. Uh, it is the flora languished in the heat of the noontime heat. Uh, I like that in the heat of the noontime heat. The uh, <laughs> the the bridge expands, the bridge expanse bulged with the weight of the moss. Each house sweated with the exhaustion of remaining upright. Oh, that's Ooh. wonderful. Oh, thank you. I, I particularly like using the word heat twice in the same sentence. Very nice. Right. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. Well, okay. So here's the deal. What we want to try to do tonight is to write a bunch of stories. And uh, we're going to do an exercise. It's called Finish My Sentence. And uh, once again, uh, if you want to do it uh, audibly, that's fine. If you want to do it in chat, that's just as good. I mean, I, that's fine as well. Uh, but uh, I'm going to say a sentence, and then uh, anybody can, uh, uh, and every and everybody should uh, you know, finish it, uh, and we'll grab one and we'll go with that finish, and then continue on. So, uh, my first sentence is going to be, 
uh, the beginning of so many wonderful stories. Once upon a time, there was, and if you would finish that sentence with a character, it would be very, very helpful. Once upon a time, there was. Would it say it again, PB? Oh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a, a fireboat captain. Uh, once upon a time, there was a fireboat captain. Now finish this one, and and if we can get a uh, if we can get some sort of a a, um, a setting into this, it would be great. So uh, once upon a time, there was a fireboat captain. Every day, the fireboat captain would. And if we can get an environment, a, a, a place, a setting. Every day, the fireboat captain would. Oh, I like that. Uh, I, I'm going to go look across the bay just because I just love the image. Look across the bay, the water at Lady Liberty. Okay. I, I love doing it this way in the chat because every single sentence we see all of the different infinite number of great stories we could have, right? Like every single time there's a tree. I'm loving that. that. Keep going. Uh, yeah, and, and the other thing is, uh, which we said before, was anything you offer is just great. Isn't so great? Looking, looking across the water at the Statue of Liberty, uh, just kind of rings to me, just and, and many of us New Yorkers, cleaning his shoes with red polish is great. Going yeah, to the go beach, to the beach for lunch. For lunch is Live great. sadly <laughs> in Antarctica. Like all, all right. of these, every single story, every single suggestion. Great. Right. Keep going. So as, as we've all as we've already done so far tonight, we we worked a little bit on characters. We worked a little bit on settings, um, and that's what we have so far. We have a, a character and a setting, and we've got a status quo. So what's gonna happen now is something has to change. There has to be an event. So once upon a time, we have a fireboat captain. Every day, he would look across the water uh, at the Statue of Liberty. Finish this sentence. But one day, and this has to be an event. I mean, this should be something. <laughs> Yeah, is that the one? All right, I, yeah, which is great. I, I don't mean to uh, just. Uh... Well, I, I, you, by I, the way, you can also be writing your own story in parallel to these prompts, which some of you may be secretly doing behind the scenes. I'm going to grab that hurricane. But one day a hurricane came. Now, once the status quo uh, of him looking across the water at the Statue of Liberty, once the status quo is, is broken, the story and, and most all of our stories are all about the consequences of what has happened. So we've got the fire captain. He looks across the water at the Statue of Liberty. And, and all of a sudden a hurricane comes. And so finish this sentence. Because of that, Before you decide which one you're going to pick, Michael, can yeah. we give our playwrights our final suggestion? Um, yeah. And 
I'm thinking maybe it should have be a, a physical object or, hey, Karen, welcome. Something that somebody or an action that someone takes because we haven't done anything physical yet. All right, so we need a, a some kind of physical action uh, uh, that a couple that a character a does. Kiss. Or, How about a kiss? There it is. Excellent. Thank you. So we've got the fire captain. He looks across the water at Statue of Liberty. But one day a hurricane came, and and I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with he dashed back. To the station. To get the engine to rush, get the engine. To rush to the statue. Let's get another consequence because he rushed back to the station to get an engine to get to the Statue of Liberty. Because of that, what happened? Well, as it often oh, no. happens, as it often happens, he got a ticket. Oh, thank goodness. Uh, I'm going to call it the Shore Patrol. How about that? And we're going to launch into the, what we call the conclusion with the word uh, that says, finish this sentence. Finally, the story is, once upon a time as a fireball captain, he looked across the water at the Statue of Liberty, but a hurricane came. He dashed back to get an engine, but he got a ticket from the shore patrol. Finally, Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you know what? These are all great. I'm going to go with, I tell you, I'm going to go with Harper. Uh, uh, Harper, you kept the ticket office. I like that. So a hurricane destroyed the ticket office. You didn't have to pay. And what you did, Harper, is launch right into the resolution. And we have a lot of resolutions here. He lived happily with the Statue of Liberty. Excellent, excellent. So now, so now I'm gonna, we haven't got a lot of time left. So I, I think, I think I've uh, kind of overstayed my time here, but, uh, I want to show you all something that we work with uh, here in when we're on stage and trying to in, uh, improvise uh, uh, um, stories or scenes, just scenes of beginning, middles, and ends. Uh, we have in our mind this story structure that I, I think is it up there? Am I sharing that story structure? You are. All right, and that's how that's how we. 
that's how we sort of uh, created spontaneously the story of what we, uh, the story that we just made up. Uh, the story, and I'm just quickly going to read it. Uh, once upon a time, there was a ferry boat captain. Every day he would look across the water at the Statue of Liberty. But one day a hurricane came. And because that hurricane came, he went back to the station and to get an engine, an engine to rush back to the uh, Statue of Liberty. But because of that, he got a ticket from the shore patrol. Well, finally, he went to the, finally the hurricane uh, uh, destroyed the ticket office. He didn't have to pay. And ever since then, he's lived very comfortably. Uh, uh, he's, he's been living with the Statue of Liberty. An excellent uh, beginning, middle, and end, spontaneously created. And I guess the, the thing that, that I would like to say is, is that um, what we would do now, and we are not going to have a chance to do it, but we could start with, we could start with the uh, uh, resolution. We don't have to follow this uh, 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 sequentially uh, in, in, in how we develop the story. We could start at the end and work backwards. Uh, as he looked at the Statue of Liberty with lovingly eyes, he remembered the day of the hurricane or something like that. So it's, it's, a, it's an insight or a hint on how when we get up on stage or when we're in front of people and we get a, a simple suggestion, we have, a, we have the knowledge that there is a structure that we can follow yep. and that there are certain benchmarks along the way that'll, that, that'll make it a, an acceptable um, beginning, middle, and, and, and kind of scene. A structure uh, called the Story Spine created by Ken Adams, Ken Adams. famous, spread around the world, picked up by Pixar, and sometimes uh, um, called the Pixar Story Spine these days, but um, a very, very world famous structure created by yours truly, Ken Adams, artistic yeah. director of the uh, of Synergy Theater and um, one of your playwrights tonight, who we are calling back right it's now about, with are they come full plays. Come yeah. back, come back, come back, come back, everyone, come back. It is time. Thank you all for uh, doing that. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. I wanted to use Annabelle and Cornelius. I wanted to use them and create a, a story. Scene, a, a story. Well, that's what you get to do back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just take those. Welcome characters. back. Welcome back, story. all. Welcome back, all. Come back. Come back. <laughs> Come back. The, the thing I was writing, my writing program crashed <gasps> after the first three minutes. It was only the first three minutes. So I almost, I almost shit a brick. Oh, well, at least that gave you some time to procrastinate, Sheila. It did, actually. I was like, what's on Google? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's good to have you all back, everybody. Um, here's what we're going to do uh, over the next couple of minutes, um, or over the next 10 minutes uh, specifically, uh, uh, during the intermission. Uh, the playwrights are going to send the plays around to everybody. Um, and cast their plays. And when you return in 10 minutes, uh, we're gonna present the, uh, uh, the, the, the premieres of five new plays hot off the internet uh, kind of uh, press. So uh, everybody, have a, have a, take 10 minutes. It is now uh, 8.25, uh, it is 25 past the hour. We will uh, expect you all to come back in about 10 minutes. Or you can hang around and watch the zaniness that happens. But uh, we'll pick it back up in, at uh, 25 minutes to the hour uh, with the brand new, uh, uh, brand new place. Have a good time. Have a good time. Bye bye. Okay. All right, you guys. Yay! Hey, Sheila, still here? Yeah. Who, um, who's ready to cast their play? I am. All right, uh, What do you need? Um, Laura Livingston, will um, you play Laura? Yes. <laughs> Sheila Head, will you play Sheila? <laughs> Which writer did that? They were like, Boy. I don't know your name. 
You was, are so imaginative. I know. I was like, I'm doing that tonight. Yeah. Now, who did that? It was whoever was with us last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam. Yeah. So that's Ken. that's who I need, Laura and Sheila. And it's it's uh, the TV tray and bowling shoes, but it'll say Valpy's play when it comes. Let me okay, great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure, I will go. I will go. So uh, forgive me. I just want to make sure I don't need anybody out. I'm going to open up the play and look. And it'll take one moment. If somebody else is right on yeah, it, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Livingston. I, um, I, uh, number one is Sheila and number two is Valby. And uh, Sheila, your character has the strongest French accent you can come up with. I'm, I've actually been hired for having one of the worst French accents <laughs> in the business. <laughs> the worst. Uh, Jeff? Okay, I have two characters. Uh, I'd like the guide to be played by Ken and Mavis to be played by Valpy. Uh, say, say it again, my character's name, Jeff? Guide, it actually does, it's just the guide. Got it, thank you. And you said Mavis? Mavis, yeah, there's only two characters in the play. Okay. So. Uh, Ken, you ready? I am ready, okay. Um, Kat Coppett, will you play Lola? Yes. Laura Livingston, will you play Marie? Jeff Tarson, will you play Pierre? Um, Do we have to have French accents? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, Michael Durkin, will you play, um, will, well, uh, Laura Valpy, will you play the prince? The prince, sure. Um, <laughs> Sheila Head, will you play the bride? Yes. And Mike Durkin, will you play the king? Okay. Uh, and Sheila. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, uh, Volpe, can, can, you, can you do like um, a New York broad type of like? New York think, broad? Yeah, yeah, she's a fortune teller. Um, and okay, was, I'll do my best and it'll be amazingly is, awesome. Her name is Madge. Horrible. Yeah, I think let's it's do Madge. It. Yeah, I think I, I named her Madge. And Madge. then Jeff, you're Ray. Ray? Okay. And if anything says Paul, it's, it's supposed to be Ray. Okay. <laughs> and then um, Laura, would you play Gigi? Gigi's a dog. But it's like, it's gibberish. So it's like, so. All right. Awesome. I think, I think that's it, everybody. All right. Like this? Like you want me to be abroad like this? Yeah, yes, like it's that there. Kind of... She's just a fortune teller. She's just making business. She's just like, you know. I love it. All right. Um, All right. So, I, so I think I'm only in Jeff's play. Is that correct? Yes. I, I don't know. I'm looking for Ken's play. I just sent it. Oh, okay. Hold on. We're getting real good at this. Uh, yeah, we are. We're getting very good at this. It's only taken us a year. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky 13, 13 still. Yeah, and enjoy every misspelled everything, all mm -hmm. of you. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, it says I type the uh, web addresses into chat, okay. Did you do that? Are we gonna do that? Uh, yeah, I have to find them. So. Did, uh, did anybody get mine? I, I got, got yours. Ken. Yeah, I got yeah, yours, Ken. Let's see. So wait, I'm reading Volpe's and Ken's. Also, Jeff, guys, I did not get yours. Did you send it yet? I did. I sent it as a link, as a connection to the earlier email that Laura sent. So hopefully, right. okay, I got it. Yeah, I just got, got, I yeah, I just got Jeff. Oh shit! I didn't mean to open that one. Son of a whore. We are live on YouTube. And... <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were on a break. My bad. <laughs> I'm so off. It's usually it's usually my part, Jeff. <laughs> and you guys also, I forgot it was supposed to be the opening line of dialogue. <laughs> And I used it, <laughs> but I just didn't open with it. Oh, that's okay. So I start You're... with failure. You're welcome. Just say <laughs> I got the line of dialogue instead of the opening line of dialogue. Nobody exactly. will. Yeah, well, now they do because like, apparently we're streaming. 
All right. I'll be right back. We, have a, we have a couple minutes, right? We have four minutes. All right. Ooh, okay. I'll be right back. Um, I'm going to use that to take a break. Okay. Ouch. Ooh. Hey, Kat, did you put in uh, right away afterwards? I, that's just a that's just a um, Facebook group, right? Yeah, yeah. So hang on, I am getting there. How do we pronounce this Latin thing? Kyrie eleison. Oh, like the song. I had to look up what it means um, in the midst. I don't know if said. I was like, I don't know what it means. And I'm curious. What does it mean? God help us. God help yeah. us. God help us. Kyrie or Lord help us. God have mercy. I can't remember. I wrote down what it meant in the script, but God have mercy on us. Yeah, is that what it is? God have mercy on us. It's a big part of the Catholic Mass. Episcopalian too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we got uh, two minutes. Thank you too. I have not even opened these. It's going to be a totally cold reading, which I do know <laughs> well. I wonder who PB is. I wish she would uh, or he would uh, show themselves. I like that. It's like peanut butter, right? PB. I assume. Hey, y'all, do we know how to say that Latin phrase? Curie liaison. What does it really mean? God help us. Uh, God have mercy upon us. I, I made up something else. Can you say it one more time? Kyrie Elysion? Kyrie Elysion. Kyrie Elysion. Yeah. Lord have mercy is what Google told me. Mm -hmm. One minute. Kyrie Elysion. Oh, man. Whew. I got no AC out here. Oh, I got I got it all in here. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you can't have. What do you What do you say, guys? It's eight thirty-five. Let's do it. All right. Who goes first? Uh, uh, uh we're gonna go in the same order. Uh, oh, Val, Val will cool. go first. Val okay. will go first, then Ken. Okay. okay. Than me. Yep. All right. better. You get them back. Rip. Corral them, oh, cat. Hey, Corral. audience, come on back. Grab your come refreshments on. and join us back. Imagine us flicking the lights. It is time to come back into the theater. While you're gathering, let me take this time to invite you to join, if you haven't already, our Facebook page right away afterwards. That is the third link right there in the chat. Um, it's exclusively for people who've been part of a right away performance. So you now qualify. And if you would like to continue the conversation, that is the place to do it. To do it. We talk about the show or writing in general. Um, there's fun, cool prompts that are put up there. I uh, have also put there for you links to Freestyle Rep and to Synergy Theater, both of whom are always doing amazing, wonderful things. Thanks, thanks. As is Mopco, by the way. Uh, up there in the, the they call it the Quad Cities, uh, Schenectady, uh, uh, Albany. I, yeah, they call it all sorts of things. Okay. Maybe that, yeah. I, among other things. I We're always, always trying to rebrand ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Well, listen, we're ready to get going. So uh, the first thing we want to do is go uh, and review all the suggestions that we sent to the playwrights. So, Kat, did you write those down? I don't know if I did. Um, are, yes, I did write them down here. So because what, it what are the, ones that, well, the, the very ones that, first suggestion was one of the characters uses the Latin phrase, curiae et liaison. Okay. And the next one was a character does a monologue about a dog. The third suggestion was fog sweeps in from the left. And finally, the last suggestion was there is a kiss. Well, playwrights, it'll be fun to hear those in each one of your plays. So uh, without further ado, I think we should just get going. And, uh, and I think we're going to start with... Uh, uh, Miss Laura Valpi Rodriguez. Uh, as always, we always like to have you uh, playwrights. Um, if you're going to read stage directions, tell us that. Uh, and we'd like you to kind of kick the play off with whatever. Here's the show, here's the play, and be sure to end it when it comes time to end. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's Laura Valpi Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Durkin. Um, the suggestions I got were a TV tray and bowling shoes. So for the moment, that's what we will title this play, a TV tray and bowling shoes. Uh -oh. um, tonight featuring Sheila Head and Laura Livingston. I will read stage directions, but my face won't be here. So I will go away and ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere of a TV tray and bowling shoes by me. It's a dimly lit living room. Laura, a woman in her mid eighties, sits on the dingy couch with a TV tray topped with a once frozen TV dinner in front of her. There is a wheelchair nearby. Sheila, late forties, sits in an old armchair nestled by the table lamp, polishing bowling shoes with great care. It's too dark. I can't see it. It's too dark. If I turn the lights up, you're going to tell me you can't see the TV and that it's too light. It's too dark. What am I eating? How am I supposed to see what I'm eating? I can't see. What is this that you gave to me? What What are you feeding me? It's a hungry man. Salisbury steak. You like it. I don't like it. Ma, you like it. Eat it. Ah, oh, crab apples. I don't like it. And watch your language. A scuff. I beg your pardon. On the shoe, a scuff. There's a scuff on the shoe. Oh, I see. I, I thought you said. What, Ma? What did you think I said? Well, now I can't think of it. Something dirty. It, it sounded dirty. Something dirty. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Ma. It is dirty. A good one. What's a... Oh, now you've got me thinking in circles, and I, I can't see my food. You're, you're blocking the light. Kyrie Eliasson. Sheila gets up and drags the end table right up next to Laura so that the old table lamp is right next to the TV tray. I said, watch your mouth. Sheila throws up her hands and exits, taking the bowling shoes with her. There, that's better. Hmm, what have we here? Do we have any polish? Laura picks up the Salisbury steak with her fork and holds it up to the light. Oh, hello there. Where did you come from, huh? How long, how far have you traveled? Was it cold in that freezer case? Were you in there, Lawn? I don't like the cold. Not for me, no. I'd rather be too hot than too cold. I traveled though, Alaska once in June, yes I did. It was very light, late at night. I, I didn't know what to make of it. My body didn't know what to make of it. It was like a, a dizzy, like um, delirium. Felt it in my he a heart. My heart wanted to sleep, but my eyes, my head, they were waiting for something. What's that, Ma? It's Salisbury steak, you were right. Happy now? Yeah, I know, Ma. I mean, what did you just say? You can mind your own business, is what I said. You don't have to be rude, Ma. Just eat up. Laura eats the steak. Are you even watching this? Yes, don't touch it. 
Sheesh, ma, I wasn't going to touch it. I was just asking if... You're like old Rusty, too. Your dead dog? How am I? Oh, good old Rusty, too. Just sitting there, watching the TV, or watching out at the back porch window, just staring out, not knowing a damn thing about what you're looking at or what you're watching out for. But someone comes along who's just trying to... And you just bark. To just like... But no bite. <laughs> Sheila turns off the TV and takes the TV dinner. And hey, it wasn't finished. It's time to go. A fog sweeps in from the left. Come on, up you go. But I, I can't. All right. Sheila, holding the bowling shoes, carefully moves the TV tray aside, kneels down by Laura's feet. She gently takes off Laura's slippers and starts to put on the shoes. She grabs the lamp from the table, moves it to the floor so she can see better. And so that the fog that has rolled in looks, um, really cool. Sheila stands. There. Now you can walk. Laura looks up at Sheila. Sheila takes her hands and helps her up gently. Time to go. Love you, Ma. Sheila gently kisses Laura's forehead. The lights dim, so the only light is coming from the floor lamp through the fog. We see Laura turn and take a step or two before her feet rise off the ground and she floats away. Through the dark, we hear. Kyrie Eleison, Lord have mercy. She's got a lot of bark, but no bite. End of play. Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Nice to Very nice. nice. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> and Sheila, I don't know if you remember this, Sheila. Oh, we do went... you remember? Sparky, right? <laughs> oh, Sparky. Oh, my God. Sparky Dog? Sparky? Yeah, Sparky Dog's a big hit with the children. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A trip down memory lane. Um, Thanks, wonderful. Sorry. Nice job, Laura Velpe. Nice job. I love the idea and of flying. I would love to do that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> Next, Ken, we have Ken, Ken Adams. Adams. I Ken All Adams. right. Thank you. So let's see. Uh, everybody knows who they are in the play. My two suggestions were uh, he brings home a sword and he brings home syphilis. And uh, this is written in the style of a Moliere farce. I will read stage directions. So let me get off screen. I'll set up the play and then you two take it away. I hope my husband. Just forgive me, Kat. Give me just one moment and then I'll start it and then you go, okay? I don't. Do I have. Okay. Do you have it starting with Lola? I hope my husband. Yeah. I just, All right. I was just making sure there wasn't. Right, right. Something yeah, I didn't write it in there. So, like, okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, yes. So, it takes place in the home of Pierre and Lola. Uh, at Rise, Lola is on uh, stage alone. And the title of the play is The Bumpy Road to Love. I hope my husband comes home from sea. How like that man to leave and worry me. All my spirits he will vex to go to sea and leave me without sex. When he comes home, I'll make him pay the price. He'll have to go to bed. He'll have to bed me quickly, twice or thrice. Enter Marie. Oh, neighbor, dear, it's I, your friend Marie. Has that man of yours returned from on the sea? That he bad man of yours returned from on the sea? He hasn't, but I'm glad that you're here to be a friend and lend me some good cheer. I cannot wait until he does return. My loins for his good manhood, they do burn. But I sit and I shall go and get some tea. Oh, husband, please return from on the sea. I'm glad. Exit Lola. I'm glad she went into that other room so I can speak my mind and voice my gloom. She does not know that her old man and I have had sex whenever I am nigh. This we have been doing for some years. We do it after drinking lots of beers. And now I've gone and fallen hard in love and I have prayed to all the gods above that when this man returns upon his ship, he'll find me and sit here upon my hip. Oh yes, if he had two, I'd kiss both necks. I can't 
just not wait to have more sex. Enter Lola. And here you are, some good mulberry tea. Oh, when will that good man come home from sea? Enter Pierre. Ah, my wife, my friend, I have returned from sea. My husband, I am glad that you are home. And I am too. Please never ever roam. My husband, I am tired. Let's to bed. Exit Lola. And I go home to wait upon your head. Exit Marie. Oh, what a mess of trouble I am in. This is what becomes of too much gin. Travel I upon the open sea, but travel I with too much mirth and glee. Kyrie eleison, that is Latin for the hex. The hex upon my loins for having sex. For I've returned with help from our Lord, and as a gift I brought a handsome sword, and also some good cherries that are pitted, and an illness sexually transmitted. Enter Lola. <laughs> My husband, wherefore do you tarry? Why do you imagine I did marry? To look upon your monstrous hairy back? No, it was to get you in the sack. But darling, I have only just walked in. Yes, and now it's time for me to win a night of frolic in our two clean sheets. But I must check the sheep, you see, it bleats. A bleating sheep is never a good sign. Forget the sheep, I tell you, you are mine. We can't have sex. We'd better in the least. We can't, my love. I have become a priest. A priest? Whatever say you now? That's right. I hear the call and took the vow. But how could you deliver me such pain? I know, I know. It all seems quite insane. And yet when heaven calls, we must obey. And how am I to ever get a lay? My child, we must learn now to resist. Oh, Kyrie Eleison, I'm quite pissed. Enter Marie. <laughs> Hello, my neighbors. I have come to ask if one of you could help me with a task. I'm sad and worried very much today because my loving dog has run away. Oh, Rover is a dog that I love much. He's friendly and quite cozy to the touch. Without him, I do not know what to do. I'm sad, I'm down, I'm sore, I'm even blue. Oh, Lola. Rover loves you just as well, and he is quite attracted to your smell. Would you go and see if you could find my dog? That would be very kind. Fine, I'll go. There's nothing for me here. Exit Lola. Look, my friend, I brought us both a beer. Neighbor, neighbor, we cannot have sex. Why not? In bed, you're king. You are the Rex. My wife is just outside. She might walk in. Well, let's not waste the time. Let us begin. We can't. Why not? You have good cause, I hope. Yes, because at sea, I was ordained by the Pope. I was ordained the Pope. What's this? You say that you are now the Pope? That's right. Do you think you could bear this news and cope? Enter Lola with the prince and his bride. Husband, husband, look at what I bring. The man who someday soon will be our king. And look who's here upon his royal arm, the woman who is known for so much charm. And he and she are going to be wed. And yet they have been cursed with mighty dread. His father, our king, is not in favor of this wedding since it has a rotten flavor to his royal nose. And so he will oppose. And since he does not like the bride I chose, the two of us have up and run away to marry and to find a place to stay that he might not at once discover till this woman is my wife and not my lover. Your wife, good sir, she tells us that you're a priest. Oh no, it's even better than you hope. This man is not a priest, he is the Pope. A fog sweeps in from the left. That fog's a cloud of dust from trampled dirt. My father's horses chase us and he'll hurt us if he finds us here together in your house. But if we're married, he will have no right to grouse. So marry us at once, you pope, you priest, or hurry and hurry or I'll kill you like a beast. Kill me, but my liege, I cannot do it. What? You tell me no? I say you'll rue it. Husband, what is this? Why say you no? My pope, this is a chance you should not blow. 
Oh dear, there's nothing left but to confess. My friends, I've played an awful game of chess, and now it seems that I have sadly lost, and now it seems that I must pay the cost. My friends, I am not priest, I am not pope. In fact, I'm nothing but a stupid dope. The truth is that I could not have the sex because my loins and penis, they are wrecks. For weeks, I have not had a piss in ease because I have a sexual disease. Enter the king! Oh, there you are, you horrid awful son. I suppose you think that you have won. Your mm -hmm. majesty, I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, no, my precious vision is a blur, a, a symptom of my dreadful bad disease. Syphilis you have, oh heaven, jeez. But now I understand, my wayward son. You're here to help this stupid son of a gun. The king kisses the prince. You left the castle with your hopeful bride, and rather than run afar and try to hide, you stopped to help this sorry man in need. My son, I am so proud of your good deed. And therefore, I forgive and bless this marriage. And if they say yes, I'll take these ladies to my carriage, where I'll give them all the sex they could use, but only if they... Yes! We choose, we choose, we choose. The king kisses them both. And I do swear, <laughs> I never will make cereal the spreading of this dread disease venereal. <laughs> Finny! <laughs> we are streaming. Oh, oh my gosh, he can't be stopped. Ken Adams, he can't be stopped. <laughs> oh my God. You, you folks are all awesome, thank you. Oh my gosh. What an incredible piece of work in 45 Seriously. minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously. 45 that minutes. So fun. Excellent, excellent job. I can't believe it. Miss Livingston, oh did you write a play? Yes, I did. I wrote a play and it's excellent. going to have um, uh, Laura Valby and Sheila Head in it. Excellent, okay. I'm gonna get out of here. And, and the two suggestions I got, I got something short and something long. Uh, and so what I got was a conversation with a boring person and life. Um, Here Laura, we go. Let me just figure out how to turn this off. Here we go. I just I have a question. Am I one or two? You are one. Okay, thanks. All right. Uh, the play takes place at night under a tree near the bay. Uh, because you have come out here underneath this tree, since you have asked me this also, I cannot say what question. I say to you look up. Yes, say that. Turn your head up to the starry heavens and see the stars that are in that heaven. And it makes one feel, um, uh, how you say it? Insignificant. I no, I say look up. It makes me feel Insignificant is the word I am needing. We oui, that is a very word. Insignificant. Our lives are so small, so very, very short. Even I, with this so gray hair, so wise person, my life has been so short, not at all long enough. So you see, say I'm over here. So as you see, you seek to create your art, Madame Bouchon. Well, what is it? Uh, m my neck. Can I look down? Oh, very well. You ask me about art, but you are not prepared to suffer a pas de tout. Not one little bit. How do you hope to be the great painter such as if I, as if you have never suffered? I... Kyrie eleison. Christie eleison? What? What is this? Why do you say this? I... I don't know. From the church service? The Catholic church service? Why do you say such a thing? I'm sorry. It's what you say, you know, in church. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. You know? Um. Why do you come to me with the recording things that records in the questions? It's for my blog about art. About conceptual art. It does make you feel insignificant. Kyrie is almost the name of my dog. I named him after the dog star up there in the heavens. 
I rescue this dog who is in my neighborhood, looking down, doing the scrounging for the food. And I think, ah, I know. I will name him after the dog store, the little Latin dog star in the heavens. And whenever I think that maybe for whatever reason, maybe a flood or a fire in the forest or the collapse of a very large and tall building due to terrorism, if for some reason I do not or cannot return to my home, I think, but who shall be feeding my little carrier liaison at each time the unthinkable, which has become very clear to me that I must think about it, the unthinkable. Your own death? It does not happen. And hoopla, I am home feeding my little dog star. Has all that happened to you and all that fire and terrorism and no it said not happen to me no it happened and i happened to be there when it happened but it did not happen to me i was not significant these things happen whether i am there or no it's getting foggy should we go and these things happen but they do not hate me hate you hate me no, nothing hates me. It just chews me up and spits me out. Did all that stuff happen that happened to you? Did it did it give you ideas for your installations? Um this fog is getting really thick. I can't see your face. He just I, I just make it home to carry a LA zone and I think I do not know where the stars have gone. They're still there? It's just the fog? Oh, Zuta Loss. I know these, the stars are there, but of course, but the stars, they are gone. My little dog is gone. I cannot think how to start again, to start another. It takes so much. I know. That's why I have a blog. Um, I don't know if I can do the art, you know? I don't know if I can have the... That is for my little dog star. We must begin again. Thank you, my little Kyrie Alezo, for being the one who has fed me this time when the world topples. This one more time, my dog star. Canis Major. Yeah, what does this mean, Canis Major? God have mercy. Ah, Cesar, Canis Major. Canis Minor. Canis Major. Amen. Amen. The fog thickens. End of play. <laughs> ah. Once again. Once I didn't again. I did not do your question marks justice, Laura Livingston. You put in all these great question marks, and I'm like, she's meaning this for my inflection, and I kept screwing it up. Sorry, she had so all these I, great I questions. Hope everyone could understand great. me. Thank you. Thank you. She um, that was amazing. I could listen to you all day. Do that. <laughs> Wonderful Worst job French you accent guys. in the business. Wonderful it was supposed to be French, job. everyone, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> I love um, it. I love just, I'm going to make Sheila do a French accent for me for a very <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, well, wonderful. Uh, Mr. Tarson, you got something for us? I do, yes. Excellent. Um, excellent. My um, suggestion. Uh, everybody else, I have to admit, I realized after the fact, got two suggestions, took two suggestions, I had one. So um, uh, that just uh, <laughs> means that it's much more important that I use it, I guess. Anyway, the, the, the play uh, and the title of the play and the, the uh, suggestion I got was Appendix. Uh, and I asked for something you hadn't seen uh, on stage as a location and I got Appendix. So this is a uh, two character play um, with Ken and Laura Valpi, and I will read stage directions. So um, enjoy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. The stage is black. Suddenly a light goes on, bathing a stage in a warm, light pink glow. We hear voices. Watch your step here. It's a little dark. Ooh, is this it? Is this the appendix? Mavis, a young woman of about 30, uh, and a guide, who's about 50-ish, uh, straight look by the, uh, straight laced by the book, they enter. Here is the appendix. 
we now see that the room is somewhat slimy. Walls seem a bit sticky, some veins or weird lines are visible. Donated to the Museum of Anatomical Curiosity in March by Dr. Samuel Hillbrand, this appendix was unearthed two years ago and authenticated as the largest known appendix of a dinosaur known in history. Observe the remnants of digestive juices emblazoned on the side walls, creating a sense of what an unfortunate prehistoric animal must have felt like once devoured. You may take pictures at this time. Mavis takes out her phone and starts taking photos. This is stupendous. Kyrie Eleison. Who? Uh, no, I said Kyrie Eleison. Uh, yeah, who is that? Is that a scientist? Oh, no, it's Latin. It means Lord have mercy. <sighs> oh, God, you're one of those. Anyway, if you come on over to the front of the appendix, you can see how it attached to the stomach lining. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt, but did you say one of those? I said nothing. I am a guide. I simply offer information. I'm not paid to judge. So the stomach lining of this creature was made to break down everything from tree bark to sharp tusks. Here you will see- I'm sorry, again, I don't mean to bother you, but I'm not sure what those you mean. I thought I was showing my joy and amazement at actually walking on and through an appendix. That's right. It is an amazing discovery. The stomach lining contained a more powerful bile than we could even imagine. Once again, I don't want to break your flow. My flow is unbreakable, madam. What is your question? Well, I... Uh... You want to know what I meant. I meant you are a Latin speaker. Davis <gasps> gasps. Latin is a dead language. We are living in a modern world, one that has amazing possibilities, discoveries, communication, and you intellectuals dwell in the past with dead things, languages, beliefs. I had a dog when I was a boy. Grover was his name. He followed me wherever I went, to school, to the crafts fair where I showed my modern art sculptures. He loved me and I used to talk to him. He was a companion, no, more than that, a friend. And more than that, a, a soulmate. I loved him with all my heart. There's a pause. Mavis looks on expectantly. The guy just stares at her. Is there more? Of course there's more. There is always more when someone talks about their dog. Grover died, but do you see me dwelling on it? Well, uh, you did just talk about him for quite a bit there. Yes, to make a point. He is dead. Latin is dead. Life goes on. Stop using the goddamn language. Now. If you'll follow me into the next room, we have an igloo made completely out of whale dung. Guide starts to exit stage right. Mavis is still reading, reeling from the guide's behavior, but as she starts to follow him. Is, is that fog? Fog sweeps in from the left. Oh no, against the walls. The fog continues in and fills the stage. What's happening? The appendix is destroying itself. They said this might happen. What? Who said it might happen? Dr. Hillbrand, he said it was a risk. Appendices are unstable. They are inherently unnecessary for survival and sometimes turn on themselves. I've never heard that before. He tries the door. It's sealed. We're doomed. Why? Why do we continue to poke at the past? Why do we not let dead things stay dead? Why? 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 <laughs> Mavis runs up and kisses the guide. Because we learn from the past, that's why. I had a dog too, and a cat, and an opossum. 
all three died. But I still love and learn. <laughs> You're crazy. Let me go. Fog is now fully across the stage. We can barely see them. No, if we die, let us die in the throes of passion. Let us be discovered by some future generation and let them learn from us. Let us be the Latin for future students of humanity. I, Grover. He hugs her close, finally vulnerable and happy. Yes, Grover <sighs> is here with you now and so am I. Fog overtakes the stage, the appendix and the two characters, end of play. <laughs> <laughs> Very well read. Very well read. Really well read. I could see everything. It was awesome. Uh, and an opossum. Opossum. <laughs> you say opossum. Yeah, but that's opossum. That was awesome. Uh, we're getting a lot of comments. I don't know if people are seeing the comments or not. I know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, oh. Great writing. Great acting. And I gotta say the same thing. These are wonderful plays and uh, wonderful presentations. Uh, nice work, everybody. Um, we're gonna head into the last one, but before we do, I just wanna remind everybody out there that after uh, the last reading, Sheila's play, uh, we're gonna hang around, uh, kind of like we hung around before the show started. We're gonna hang around um, uh, after the show and you know we'll talk about what we did or whatever we'll talk about. Who knows what we'll talk about. But uh, you're cordially and, and, and warmly invited to, to please join us. And if you have any questions or thoughts or whatever, we'd love to entertain them. Uh, because apparently we just love to entertain. Is that is that right? Am I talking to everybody here? You're it's talking. Great. You talking down there? You guys but don't there? worry. Yes. We won't be trapped here for a long time. We're talking about no. like five, five minutes. Like a couple minutes. Right, right. Like right. Not a long time. Nobody's yeah. had dinner yet. So... Uh, uh, and I think Phelps will take that shower. All right, Dude, let's... <laughs> it's needed. It, I have let's... to also clean out the sand from the bathtub because the kids oh, are in there sand. first. And uh, it's, uh... Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome our, our guest playwright for this evening, uh, a friend of ours from so many years, for so many years, and just a delightful person. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Sheila Ed. All right, thank you. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, it takes place in a psychic's place, and um, my prompt was a, were lines of dialogue. I never told you this before. I died today. Um, so uh, Volpe's gonna be reading uh, the medium, and uh, Jeff is Ray, and Laura will appear on voiceover as Gigi. I'll read the stage directions. Okay, here we go. Sorry, it's uh, everything's happening. Okay, hold on, it's all good. Got it, all right. A fortune teller's room. Madge sits at her table, complete with crystal ball. Next. No one enters. Next. Nothing. She's in crack, is that it for today? She gets up and peeks behind the beads that separate her chamber from the waiting room. Hey, you, look alive. You want a reading? Ray follows her to the table. Oh, hi. Sorry, it's, it's really hot. It's better in here. I have AC. It won't help. You're a downer. Let me guess. You're here for a tarot card reading. Want to know when your lover will come back to you? Actually, I was hoping for... Tea leaves. Mm -hmm. Am I right? You look like you could use some tea. I'm really hot. Thanks, but... Look, buddy. I'll put a cube in it for you. I'll get terrific results with tea leaves. I get terrific results. It it lets me know I needed to leave flyers on the subway cars, and now I have some good traffic coming in here. I'm very good. Kyrie eleison. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Latin? Kyrie eleison. Okay, buddy, take a seat. I can't get you God, but I know some of his friends. Get it? No? I'm so hot. It's too hot. Okay, hun. What's your name? I'm Ray, and I need you to contact someone for me. Crystal ball. On it. 
I got you, buddy. Don't worry. Don't you worry. Let me see. She places her hands over the crystal, takes a deep breath. Crystal ball. Crystal ball. Ray is here. Ray is here. And he needs to contact someone. Crystal ball. She pops into a deep trance and she pops right out and shakes her head. <sighs> I'm not great at the ball. I gotta be honest with you. But someone on the other side said, I'm in the back making mojitos out of sand. Where are you? No, I don't need to talk to her. Her, I know. Okay. Okay. I, I pride myself on intuition, but I need a little help here. I got to talk to my sweetheart. <gasps> Say no more. She takes a deep breath, pops into a trance, pops back out. <gasps> this one lady wanted you to know that the Pomeranian that you gave beer to had diarrhea for a friggin' week. Madge pops into a trance, becoming the woman. <gasps> Dog was everything to me. I took it everywhere. Its fluffy hind quarters were always pristine. That little dog was a precious jewel. Once, when I had to go to the hospital for my eye surgery, that little dog, my little Gigi, busted out of my apartment and came all the way on her own to my hospital room. She hid out in the laundry hamper and snuck her way in. From there, she followed my scent. My eye surgery was not successful, but my little Gigi wouldn't have it. She sent herself to seeing eye dog school and became my constant companion. But you had to give her your beer. You just had to. That one bout of sickness for her lasted a week, a very important week. A doctor, the world's expert on the exact type of eye condition I had, the only person in the world who could have done surgery to restore my sight, was traveling all the way from Sri Lanka for two days. But Gigi was sick because of you. So I remained blind. And that, Ray, that is why you were sent to hell. Madge pops out of her trance. Holy crap! You're in hell? I never told you this before. I died today. You could have started with that. You talk a lot. When did I have the chance? Well, crap, Ray. What do you want me to do? I'm good, but I can't get you out of hell. That's on you. I need you to contact someone for me. You're the only crackpot medium in this town who can even see me. God damn it. Don't you dare go telling the other deads. Deads? Dead people, dead people. Don't tell the other deads that I can see them. Why? It would be great for your business. Dead people don't have money. <laughs> I have a box in the basement of a bank. It, it has about five grand in it. I can tell you where the key is. Now you're talking. Fog sweeps in from the left. Madge sits at her table, takes a deep breath. Nice effects. Thanks. For five grand, you get the works. Who do you want to contact? Gigi. The dog? Gigi the seeing eye, Pomeranian. The one you fed beer to and caused that lady to be blind. That's the one. I don't speak dog. Gigi is very intelligent. She'll understand. Also, she's still alive, so... So? So really, I just need you to call her. Her number is... The dog has a phone? It's just a landline. It's not a smartphone or anything. That would have been too hard. She doesn't have fingers. Madge looks at him for a beat, takes out her phone. What's her number? 212-874-6495. Madge takes a deep breath. Fog rolls in from the left. Lights dim. She dials. Phone ring. 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 Click. Ruth. Hello, Gigi. My name is Madge, and I'm a psychic and a medium. You might have seen my flyers on the subway. Ruth. I have a message for you from beyond. Ruth. Yeah, from Ray. Silence. Nothing from Gigi. You there? Silence. Gigi. 
What's your message, Hellboy? Tell her I'm sorry. And... He says he's sorry, and he kisses you. I'm terribly sorry, Gigi. If I could do one thing over, and I did terrible things. I killed people, I lied, I stole. But if I could do one thing over, I never would have shared my beer with you. We don't have much time, Gigi. Did you hear that? (laughs) He said, I'm terribly sorry, Gigi, if I could do one thing over, and I did terrible things, I killed people, I lied, I stole. But if you could do one thing over, I never would have shared my beer with you. Okay, thanks. Hangs up. She says she forgives you. Now, where's that key? Under the doormat. Which doormat? You're the psychic. (laughs) The lights fade and... Oh, oh. <laughs> my oh, gosh. I come up and oh. Oh, oh, my gosh. Oh, my <laughs> Very fun and silly. Yeah, that was really good. It was really Yay. good. All right, you guys. You guys are too much. You guys are too, too much, too much. Well, listen, uh, uh, the playwrights are going to go away for just a second. Why don't you guys just kind of go away for a second? And uh, uh, I just want to uh, uh, thank everybody who, who joined us tonight. And uh, as always, uh, you, you've been a, a, a wonderful audience. And uh, uh, um, every year, every month we, uh, we, we do this. And, and these are the people who've been very kind and, 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 and generous to us. and, and uh, uh, it's been a it's been a real honor to be working for them. Uh, and this whole year has been kind of tough, and uh, we kind of figured out ways to you know keep our brains straight and our body strong and our spirits elevated. And, and uh, those of us in the performing arts, uh, originally when we couldn't work in front of audiences, it was it was terrible. And then we found ways to to uh, to work in front of uh, audiences. So. You have been very thankful, or, or, or we have been very thankful for your for your uh, participation, and you've been very generous to us. Uh, and uh, if you're able to, uh, uh, our our uh, emails, our, our websites are in the chat, and if you can make a contribution and help our company synergy and freestyle, we'd appreciate that very much. Uh, the work goes on. Thanks very much. And, and join us next month. Um, July 19th uh, is our next presentation, and uh, um, we'd love to have you here. Kat, you know who's going on. I do. Um, you will be hosting again, and you will be joined by Ken Adams, Adams. to host. Um, our writers will be Heather Adams, Laura Livingston, Jeff Tarson is back, uh, Lisa Thompson. Lisa Thompson's going to be Lisa Thompson will be joining us. And, um, and you can be joining us again with uh, tell your friends, bring people along, the more the merrier. Um, let's have all of the playwrights back for a- Come on back, everybody. Bow. A final bow. Hey, Mike, you're still sharing your screen. Oh, then stop, stop sharing it. And okay. uh, then we can see people. Feel free if you want to stay to turn on your cameras. Have a lovely night, all of those who you're going, who are going about the rest of your in space lives, and we uh, look forward to seeing you again. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, everybody.